Hi, I am Shelby, also known as Rocking the Stockings with Pots. Today, I'm going to share with you the core routine that I do. Um, core is one of those things that can be great, and it can also be really terrible. When I was first told to do core, the explanation given was that core helps you strengthen your abs, and strengthening your abs, you can kind of prevent some of that pooling of blood in your lower extremities. So that's great. Sounds really wonderful. But I had only ever been taught how to do core with a lot of movement. So bicycles or lots of like up and down movements, and it just does not that's not something that I want to do every day. That's not something I really ever want to do. So I've kind of taken some different ab workouts that I've learned through sports and things and just found one that works for me with a variety of different aspects to it. One of the things that I do to maintain this each day is feel free to modify it as I need. So if it's a day when I don't feel well, then I just change it so I'm doing something that does feel comfortable. If there's one that that day somehow made me lightheaded, that's okay. I might cut that one out and just replace it with one of the exercises that works for me. I also keep each exercise to 30 seconds. Some people say it's good to build. For me, doing longer intervals of time does not sound like something I am going to do every day. I tried it for a while, kind of increasing, and right now I'm pretty comfortable just doing my 10 minutes of core. So yeah, that's me. This is my routine. You can try it with me if you want. You don't have to, but here we go. I'm going to start by setting my timer. I use the HIIT app on my phone, so high intensity interval training, and I just set it work for 30 seconds and then rest for 10 seconds, and then I set it for 10 rounds. Yeah, there's nothing really specific to it, and what's really nice with the timer is you can pause it whenever you like. So let me tell you, I don't actually take only 10 second breaks. I just program the 10 seconds in there so I have time to kind of shift to the next position before my next 30 seconds starts. You'll see as we go. Okay. Okay. So hopefully this is good. Oh, there goes the exercise ball. Okay, here we go. We are going to start off with a plank. For the plank, there are several different ways you can do the plank. So you could have yourself on your knees and your elbows like this, and you just want to make sure you're engaging your core and you're not like that with your back. So your back is kind of in line with your spine and your neck. So you're not like this, and you're not way down here, but you're kind of somewhere in between. The other modifications you can do if you're feeling really good, you can go ahead and bring your knees up or if you're feeling really, really good, you can do a full plank. So your hands are by your chest, and you're going to bring yourself up kind of like this. Now, I don't recommend that one. That one makes me very lightheaded very quickly. So I'm going to do with my elbows and with my knees. Here we go. Okay, the next one we're going to do is going with the plank theme. We're going to do a side plank. This one's really tough. I've built this one in over time. So if this one is not working for you, totally fine. You could try staying with the plank with your elbows and your knees. Um, yeah, this one, I think it's really hard. I think for me the biggest thing is anything that incorporates my arms 
makes it more difficult and I end up feeling more lightheaded, more dizzy, and way more likely not to complete the exercise. So here we go. I will show you this one. Okay. So you can either have your hand here at your side or you can kind of prop it up. Um, I think whatever is comfortable for you. You should know my form. <laughs> it's not great, but I just wanted to give you an idea of the general exercises you can do. Okay, and then for this one, I switched to my other side. So I'm gonna take a break on your stomach. And then, oh, see my timer went off before me. Ugh, but I'm not ready. So I just chill here, my stomach, kind of recover. And then when I'm ready, I'll switch to the other side. Okay, so there you have that one. The next one we're gonna do, we're gonna keep on our stomach. I found it really important to stay either on your stomach or your back and not continue to flip in between the two. So this one is a Superman. What you do is so you're gonna bring your feet up kind of like that and you're gonna reach your arms out forward. You should be able to feel it in your core. If for any of these you're not really feeling it, that might be a sign that you're not really doing it right, so you might check out some other videos that kind of help you with that technique. I'd also encourage you, as you're doing these, to just be really aware of your lower back muscles. So here, just making sure they don't feel too tight. Okay, so we did four on our stomach. This is where I roll over and I do the rest of the exercises on my back. If rolling over is really hard for you, that is okay. You take a break here, or you can just stay on your stomach, repeat the previous four. Really, whatever you can do is helping you. So, you know, start where you are and build as you're able. Okay, so this is going to be the bridge, so you're going to kind of have your feet kind of by your, like if you extend your arms, your feet should be up here kind of by where your fingertips are reaching to, maybe about an inch away. There you go. I paused it. See, got a way longer than 10 second break, but that's all right. Okay, so for this one, you're going to want to bring your butt up and kind of have your pelvis coming up. The higher up you can bring it, the better it's gonna be. I like this one too, because you can do it so that your legs are engaged. So you're working on both your legs and your core. If you wanted to make it more difficult, you could cross your arms in this fashion, but here I am again. Anything with the arms is making me lightheaded. Whew. The next one we have is the one-legged bridge. So you're going to take one leg. I like to put my bottom leg out farther. I'm going to lift up. This one also causes me a lot of problems. I normally only do this one on a really good day that's pretty symptom-free. If I'm not feeling it, then I just go back to the regular bridge.
You got one leg done. Now we'll do the other side. Okay, so after we've done that one, we're going to switch into a boat. So for the boat, I like to kind of just put my hands a little bit under my butt, and you're going to lift up your legs a little, and if you're feeling up to it, you can go ahead and lift your head a little bit. If that, again, makes you lightheaded, go ahead and just leave your head on the floor and just do your legs. For me, again, that's one of those little small things that... I modify day to day. If you're not getting the point already, my opinion about core is it's great, but you really, really have to take time to figure out what's gonna work for you. All right, so into boat we go. I think this one is the absolute hardest. Okay. Whew. So you'll notice I just pulled my legs back up. For me, that kind of helps with the recovery. Um, I couldn't explain to you the science behind why, but something I like to do to break with. You're actually going to put your legs back out for the next one and have your hands here again. And we're going to just do some leg lifts for 30 seconds. Some people like to count the number of lifts they do. For me, again, I'm trying to keep my core in a contained amount of time that I will actually complete each day. So I just do the 30 seconds. Okay. And here we go. The key here to get the most benefit is to go slow on the descent and slow as you're bringing them up. If you just throw your legs down, gravity is doing all the work. Gravity already does all the work for us and is not our friend. So we don't need it here in this situation either. Pulling our legs down. Okay. Right, so the last one that I do is just a simple little crunch like this. Instead of going up and down, up and down, like other people might do, I just hold it and make sure I can feel it in my abs. The farther you reach, the more you're gonna feel it. Okay, and that's it, that is my core workout.